Okay, hi everyone. My name is Chris. I'm a biologist and I want to tell you the story of how genetically modified food saved the world. So our story begins in 1940. At that stage, experts predicted that in the coming decades, millions would die as global population increases outstripped food supply. Resource warfare, famine, and environmental collapse seemed inevitable. However, this was prevented by one man named Norman Borlaug. Norman Borlaug was an American plant biologist who spent 20 years working in the Mexican desert. He crossbred thousands of strains of wheat together. He took the best traits from each. He took drought resistance, immunity to disease, productivity, and crossbred it into one strain of super wheat. Then he distributed that worldwide. So by the mid-1960s, India, Mexico, and Pakistan were all producing double the grain that they had been before. What Norman Borlaug had done was kickstart the Green Revolution that saved a billion lives, 1,000 million people from famine. So this was accomplished using the simplest genetic engineering technique that we have, selective breeding. Basically, this is what farmers and dog breeders have been doing for thousands of years with no knowledge of genetics. And it's what turned wolves into poodles, and it's what turned apples from the size of a walnut to the size they are today. But today's tools are a lot more powerful and a lot more precise. So we have vast genetic libraries that let us take one gene from any organism and install it in another to solve any technical problem we need. Good example. In countries in the developing world where vitamin A deficiency is a serious problem because rice is the staple of food and it doesn't contain much vitamin A. So researchers took genes that contain vitamin A from, of all things, daffodils and soil bacteria and transplanted those into rice. The result was called golden rice and one cupful of this has half your RDA of vitamin A in every cup. So because of this, this shows why, in my view, Genetic engineering is the second wave of the food revolution that Borlaug began. But we need to be careful. Um, genetic engineering is only part of the solution. Today, in our world, more people die of obesity-related disease than die of famine. And the third world is impoverished not because of, you know, just nature, not just by nature, but by economic and societal injustice. So we as scientists can't treat this as simply a technical problem we can solve alone. This is a conversation we all need to be a part of. And for that reason, I hope you'll share my enthusiasm that genetic engineering could save the world again. Thank you very much.